screen. And welcome all of you. I'm Erin Becker. I am the director of the Cambridge Art Association. And thank you for joining us today for our May 21st virtual studio visit with Lori Lander. Um, this session is being recorded and will be posted later on our YouTube channel where you can see all of our virtual studio visits that we've hosted. This is actually the 10th one. Um, so thank you, Lori, for inviting us into your studio today. And I'm going to have you take it away. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome everyone to my studio. Uh, I'm going to first give you a quick sort of pan of sort of what the studio looks like. And then I'm going to sort of describe what subject matter I like painting and uh, process of painting and then show you uh, paintings that are about I'd say 95 to 98% done. Um, they were supposed, I was supposed to have a show at Cambridge Public, uh, Cambridge Public Library for the month of April. Uh, but in early March, as everything else ground to a halt, uh, we postponed that show since no one is going to the library. Uh, so some of the paintings sort of stopped about two to 5% from finish. Uh, so you'll see some of that. Um, but first, so I live in a, uh, the old Fairweather Street School building, which we purchased, my ki our kids went to the school. Um, we purchased the building, which was built in 68. It's sort of a large brutalist style building. Um, and my studio is on the third floor in the old music uh, classroom. Uh, it's a cool space, lots of light. Uh, there are also loft spaces that weren't lofts during the school. I, when we moved in, I made it my studio. We built ladders and rails so that the kids could be up in the studio uh, while I was painting. Uh, so um, as a brief indication going around and then I'll stop back on these. Uh, so I started painting uh, when I was a kid um, and I grew up in New York City, uh, went to Art Students League on Saturdays when I was in middle and high school, uh, and continued painting through school, um, even though I didn't major in art, uh, but continued painting. I, uh, when I graduated from college, my uh, Eric, my husband and I, not yet married, uh, went to Asia and decided to, we spent the summer in Japan teaching English. And then I went to uh, Bali for six weeks because I was taking a year off and had uh, seen a film by Margaret, Margaret Mead when I was in sixth or seventh grade and it had stuck with me. Uh, and while I was in Bali by myself for six weeks, spent a lot of time with staying right near the market, the central market. And so spent a lot of time in the market uh, and was just like totally captivated by the, um, by the women in the market. Uh, the markets in Bali started at like 5 a.m. Um, the women who have been growing the food, uh, preparing it for market, bringing it to market, uh, taking care of their families, uh, preparing, um, preparing, uh, I, for temple festivals, which I don't think, well, I guess actually there's a painting back there of, in process of a woman at a temple, going to a temple festival, but they carry such a burden, uh, such a load for the community. And in the markets, I found that I was just uh, totally taken by uh, the women, whether they were actively engaged in talking with one another, whether they were uh, sitting just quietly, uh, waiting for customers or tired uh, later in the day because they've been up for so long, often having to travel uh, some distance to get to the market, um, but also the sounds of the market and the smells and the uh, tapestry of colors. So just fell in love with that. And when I came home from Bali, started painting um, scenes from uh, 
the markets in Bali from small photographs. This is back in 78. So small photographs that you couldn't see, did the photograph work or not? You couldn't see whether you had lost your whole role. Um, and since that time, uh, in process, that's what we've done. We've, my husband and I and our kids, uh, Jessica, Daniel, and David, have continued traveling. Um, and uh, we actually keep sort of uh, records of all the countries we've traveled. And I think amongst us, probably Daniel is up to like 75 countries. But everywhere we go, we spend a lot of time in the markets. Um, we, in addition to the sort of the sights and the sounds and the smells, we also love talking to um, the women in the markets. We buy a lot of food. We've been known to come back with suitcases full of spices from the markets, uh, which you are allowed to come back with, not the fruits and vegetables. But uh, so, uh, and we take lots of photos to bring back. Um, sometimes we'll just sort of like, widely take photos um, to get a sense of the market. Other times we'll zoom in on particular people. Sometimes it's someone we've been talking to. Sometimes it will be, we're from farther away. Uh, and when I get home, I sort of uh, organize those photos into uh, different groups by country uh, and then think about Let's begin thinking about what photos could I, might I want to work on for a painting. And for those, what I'll often do is, I think you can see, I like to work in squares. Um, and so uh, you might see, so this is, so this is a rectangular painting, which was farther away. I'll crop it uh, to come in on what I think will make a good composition for a painting or what I hope will make a good composition. Uh, when I then will, from the photo, then I'll do a, a 12 inch square, if I can get this right, it's a little high, um, painting of a, as a study to see, can I make it work? Um, do I think it works after that? If I think that, the painting will work, um, the photo moving into a painting that that will work as a painting. Then I take it to a larger square. I work on 40 by 40s. Um, so that one obviously is already painted, but here's an example of one that is just starting of um, women uh, in a market in Lebanon. Uh, so I'll just paint them all of the paintings are oil on canvas. So this one, what, I've, what I'll do is just to really dilute uh, blue oil to just do my sketch to see, again, can I make it work large? Um, sometimes that doesn't work <laughs> and I'll end up uh, either starting again or doing something else. So this one that I was showing you both the photographs and the um, the small painting, let me see if I can get the right distance. Uh, this is a market in Cusco, Peru. Uh, and so what I'll try to do is try to capture some of that color and energy um, uh, that we're seeing when we're experiencing, when we're in the markets. Uh, I can't obviously capture all the vibrancy but trying to capture as much of that as I can. Uh, the, so I'll show you now uh, some of the other paintings for this show. Um, this is one from Mysore. Uh, so forgive me if I'm not getting, it's, it's sort of an unusual sort of like moving the computer around. This is one from Mysore, India. Uh, uh, when I mentioned sort of like having to go back into things like this one, uh, they, I'll say the good thing of having the po postponement is it allows you, allows me because I tend to do things more last minute, um, painting pretty close up to my shows. It allows me to go back and say, 
what's not, is there something that's not completely working? Um, I enlist my family members and friends to give me um, crits, sort of like, where is their eye getting stuck? Uh, is something not quite working? So an example might be here, the basket coming right into the pole doesn't work. Um, and so I'm gonna pull the basket farther out in front of the pole, which it was, but not quite as defined as I'll probably make it. Um, and similarly in the photo of this, there is a bag of rice here. Um, but I'm not finding that it works or that I can make it work that well. So I'll probably create this, move this into um, uh, just the rest of this wall. Um, I'm not sure if I have, oh, I think I can show you the photo of, I'll work, usually I'll enlarge the photos from what um, I, when I have those little ones that I showed you. And so you'll, you can probably see that there's like this rice bag down in the lower left corner, but I'm not getting that to work very well. So I, I won't edit a lot, but what I'll often do is edit some to simplify. And so in this case, I think that um, I'm gonna next try just moving the, taking out the lower left hand rice bag and making that the remainder of the wall. Um, other paintings. This is um, I, this was in uh, La Paz, Bolivia, uh, a family trip, and the markets there are really amazing. Uh, the women in the markets uh, wear these layers upon layers upon layers of petticoats, which make their form really, really large. Uh, the, this, I'll show you another from that market, but this, um, we were there a little bit later in the day uh, for these, these photographs. So although these women had started working because it's a morning market, they had already been there for hours. Um, so they had, um, this is another one from that market. Uh, how am I gonna get this straight? Sorry. Aaron, tell me when I'm more straight. Uh, maybe uh, if I put, actually, I think if I put it on the floor. That's perfect. Yes, because they're on the floor. Uh, I, so, both, actually, maybe I'll put it for both of these um, next to one another. Uh, sure. Let's see if that can work. Yeah. Um, so uh, we wandered in the market and you got, we got a real sense of these were women who had probably tried to try, probably had to travel an hour or more to get to the market. Uh, the markets would have opened at 5 or 6 a.m. We, we arrived later in the day and they had been there all day and were tired. Uh, as I said, on these, you had these cool petticoats of, they just had these layers of petticoats with ruffles and such. Um, and uh, it was just like a really awesome market. Uh, I guess while I'm still on the floor, uh, this one is a market in Seoul, South Korea, uh, a woman selling garlic. I, I both sort of loved the, I, all the garlics and the shapes of the garlics, but I also loved the, the fact that she was wearing this jacket that she could have gone from the garlic stand to an office. Um, and I, for all of these women, I feel like you, I'm always taken by their dignity um, and the strength that you get to see. Um, 
This one is in Papua New Guinea. Um, uh, yeah, up in the mountains, uh, Papua New Guinea it has um, thousands upon thousands of different languages of different peoples that because of how densely forested and how hilly the country is, um, people are very, very isolated, different uh, groups of people. Um, and, uh, but they're up in the central highlands where we were, there was a very sp large sprawling market of anyone who was within an hour and a half or two hours would come into uh, to sell at. Uh, and people would, there was an indoor sort of covered market space, but there's also, as in many places, uh, people just spreading ground cloths on the ground and putting out uh, what they're selling. In this case, a lot of beans, and a lot of carrots, and uh, a lot of lettuces. Um, I, another market where people were selling on the ground. Um, it was in Bangalore, India, uh, where there would be women selling riots of flowers, um, flowers uh, that people would use to bring to their home or would get sewn um, as you're seeing her sort of begin sewing uh, flowers for garlands that would be taken to temples to decorate temples. Uh, and so the another thing that I love about the markets is sort of the sense that you also get of what are the stories behind what people are doing or what people are cooking. This one is in Chiang Mai in Northern Thailand. And in Chiang Mai, uh, in the city, uh, our daughter Jessica lived there for a year teaching at the university. And apartments in the city don't have kitchens. Uh, and people eat all their meals from uh, street, uh, street vendors and stalls out during the day. Uh, and the meals were quite inexpensive. So, uh, you know, just the streets, there are all these different markets around where you can find really delicious food. Um, but I just sort of found interesting that both the market and what's sold in the market will tell you something about how people are living in the city. Uh, I think, uh, I may have shown you all of the ones for this show. So I think that um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, or talk more about one thing or another or uh, whatever you like. Fantastic. Um, so if anybody has any questions, um, let me know. You can either type them into the chat box. Um, there's also the hand raise function that is uh, possible in Zoom. Um, but send us your questions for Lori. Oh, Lorraine Sullivan has a question. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm struck obviously by the fact that it's all women. Your subject matter is women. Um, were there men there? Did you choose to focus on the women? Or are they predominantly the, the vendors of this food? Um, so in Bali, um, where I first started painting these, they were all women. And in most of the world, um, except for the Muslim world, uh, I'd say 90% of the vendors are oh. women. Mm -hmm. And indeed, probably 90% of the shoppers mm -hmm. are women. So that it's very much a women-dominated community. Uh, there's, um, I think there's been writings about some of the market culture in uh, West Africa, which I haven't visited, but sort of mm -hmm. their nexuses of community um, within the community. And although men might hold uh, the official 
positions. Uh, there are hierarchies of within the community based on the women's participation in the markets. Interesting. Um, and so I have, um, I do end up uh, sometimes, like so in, I have fewer paintings from the uh, Muslim world because there aren't, um, uh, there are much fewer women uh, mm -hmm. in the markets, either as vendors or as shoppers. Uh, it's not totally true. Like the one that I was just starting from Lebanon uh, were women. Uh, but so, and I, so I haven't painted as much there. Um, when I do my paintings, as I mentioned, I'll usually stay pretty close to um, the photograph. I, I will sometimes edit for simplicity. And I, you know, there are occasionally men around in the paintings. Um, um, and I, whether or not I keep them sort of depends on where, how they fit in it. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, I think the one painting that I actually didn't show, uh, except glancingly, was this one, which is from Ljubljana, uh, the capital of Slovenia. And this is a market that they're actually, I think not ha didn't happen to be in my photograph that there were men, but there certainly were men in the market, not as seller vendors, but as shoppers. Um, but uh, so, uh, so I find it, I just find the women both appealing to mm. for themselves and also because of sort of anthropologically what's going on in them, uh, with them. How do they feel about you photographing them? Uh, it depends. Uh, we try to be really respectful. We're, we're usually traveling either myself and my husband or um, all of us, uh, my, myself, my husband and our now adult children. Um, when the children were little, it was really easy because everyone wanted to engage with the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. And indeed, like in Ubud and Bali, people would like pick up the kids and just like <laughs> sort of go <laughs> off to play with them. Uh, usually, because we're also buying things, we'll buy spices, we'll buy fruit, um, we'll... Um, if we're trying to take a photograph of someone close up, um, it's usually someone we'll, we'll find a way to engage in, engage yeah. with. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the challenge is they'll want to pose. Um, and so then trying to sort of uh, engage. Yeah. Um, and often we can do it like um, the examples are, here, there was this wonderful woman who I haven't painted yet. Um, can I don't know if you can see her. This woman here was just like so cool and totally engaging. We were, she was selling with her niece and our younger son speaks Spanish pretty fluently. So he was able to have conversation with her. And uh, we just spent like probably about 15, 20 minutes talking with her. And I have some photos that were very posed looking at us and then others that we were able to capture her um, looking otherwise. And then other people like the one that's the, this one is from being farther away. So people aren't really noticing you. Yeah. Uh, we try obviously to be really respectful of if anyone sort of like waves their hand that they don't want a picture yeah. We don't take that picture. Uh, well, they all look, your paintings are so colorful. I, the palette, is, it's amazing. They're sunny and it gives me this very positive feeling about the experience you have in dealing with these women and getting to know them a bit. And they're very joyful. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, they bring me a lot of joy to paint. Yes, yes. And so, um, I... So they're a joy to paint, other than when I'm getting really frustrated because I can't make something work. <laughs> uh, the, one of the things I love about painting um, with oil um, is that if something's not working, I can uh, literally just paint it out and try again. Uh, and there, I will lose 
some of sort of like, uh, sometime I can get a thin layer if I get it right the first time. So I'll lose mm -hmm. some of that, but generally I can, uh, if I, if with oils, I can keep trying to make it work. So um, Elizabeth Bartle has a question that dovetails nicely with that. So go ahead, Elizabeth. Oh, um, sorry, I, uh, that's okay. Hi, um, Lori. Uh, no, I just was, you take a lot of photographs and they're all spectacular. What draws you to a specific um, photograph that makes you want to paint that one over the many that you take? What, what are the components or the elements of the photograph that um, draws you into it? Uh, so that's interesting. So if I go back to, you know, show the different photographs, these are actually, although, these are all ones that I would consider painting. So I've pulled those from, you know, all the ones we might have. Um, but well, things I'm looking for are, uh, you know, certainly for this, this was just like, it, as we saw them there, it was just like, oh, that's a I want to paint that. Um, uh, something like this, where there's a lot going on, but I might, crop in more, right? Can I make that work um, with her doing that? Something like this one, sometimes I want to get sort of the solitariness, but sometimes I may want to get the interactions right. of someone of there. Or like with this woman, just sort of the, she's just like just such great expressions. Mm -hmm. uh, something like this. It might be because I, I think the composition or the different elements mm -hmm. could work really interestingly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong <laughs> when I start painting it. So it's sort of like interesting about, you know, I have, I still have a, a image from um, Bali from years ago that I just, I have never been able to make work. And so uh, it may just always remain as a photograph uh, mm -hmm. rather than being conveyed. Because I think there's sometimes where something works better as a, you know, works well as a photograph, but there's something about that that I can't quite make work um, as a painting. I'll tell you, it's so, pho they're so photogenic on Zoom. I can't, I mean, they're just, as the person before me said, they're just spectacular looking on, uh, they're, the colors are, I guess every picture has amazing colors. So colors are not an issue when you go to look at me. <laughs> I do like painting with bright colors. Uh, yeah. uh, but what I also like too, and you can see in the, this one, the one of the two women from La Paz is, I love playing with grays mm -hmm. and different shades of gray and using, trying to, use that as a way to make colors pop even more. Right. Uh, so in that painting or in uh, this one of sort of how can I make, can I make that a gray that really serves as a ground that mm -hmm. uh, will make it really pop. Mm -hmm. This painting is actually a good example of editing because um, behind the women, and I'll see if I can find the photograph, they, um, there was, uh, there was this truck and I have gone back and forth on this painting of whether to delete the truck or to, I, I have painted it. I have tried painting it with the truck, not in heavy detail, but in um, enough detail that it gave the impression. Um, and I, that didn't work very well. So as I mentioned, I can paint out. So <laughs> I painted it out now that I still have several months before the, uh, the show, it may be that I try something back there again. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a, good, a changing process. All right, we have a question from Deborah Downs. I'm gonna unmute you, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Deb. Hi, Lori. Um, I was wondering how you get 
like different textures in your paintings. Like it seems that some of it is a little bit like you have this defined image uh, lots of times and then the atmosphere around it is a little different. And I wondered if you use different tools to make those or do you, is everything pretty much with a paintbrush? Everything's with a paintbrush. Um, I know it's all paintbrush. Uh, I think that what you're probably seeing is a, just a different choice of how to paint a surface. Uh -huh. um, I, the, I, what I'll often try to do is uh, paint my, try to get um, my paint, I don't have any out right now, but uh, try to get paint um, that's the consistency of yogurt. Um, I, using both uh, paint, I use Gamblin paints, and then I use uh, Gamsol um, as my solvent and uh, Galkide as the um, medium. Uh, and years ago, like in 1979, I did this painting workshop with, um, at Bennington, a summer workshop, and the painter, Neil Welliver, the landscape painter from Maine, yes, uh, who yes. did gorgeous paintings, came to do uh, crits during the, we were lucky enough to have him come do crits. And he talked about, um, I think he just did a crew crit, but he talked about his, that he would um, build up his paint to be like a yogurt consistency from which he could then thin it if he wanted thinner surfaces or he could um, use it to lay, you know, with a single stroke to lay a piece of, that would be conveying in this case, the bean. Yes. Um, or the highlight on that, to do that in a single stroke. Uh. Um, so I, that really stuck with me and I often, um, we'll try to use that as my base consistency. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, okay. We have some nice comments, which is great. Um, <laughs> it looks like we have one, which I will save for you. I looks like we have one more question from Mary Kosman, I think. Go ahead. Um, Mary, you're unmuted. Oh, I am unmuted. Okay. Hi, Lori. Hi. Um, Thank you for doing this wonderful studio visit. Oh. My son went to Fairweather, so he was in oh, your room. Cool. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. So the question I have is you're working with um, like toxic materials like Galkid and all that stuff. How do you handle the fumes and everything and, and keep from getting sick? Uh I have, well, I, I open the window, except in, even in the, um, even in the middle of winter, I tend to open the window at least a crack. And mm -hmm. from this time of, this time through fall, I'll open it more. Uh, and I think I'm lucky enough to be not, uh, not that sensitive. Uh, I tend to, um, use a relatively tall, um, uh, actually I don't have them now because they're older, but I'll tend to use a relatively tall container um, with mm -hmm. a small amount of solvent so mm -hmm. that it's somewhat contained. Um, right. And I'll right. use as little as I need um, at any one time uh, for mm -hmm. both the sol solvent and the medium. Uh, so I, so I, I find that it's, it tends to not, I've been lucky. <laughs> it hasn't bothered me. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So um, if anyone else has any other questions, please let me know by typing into the chat box. I'm briefly going to share my screen um, so that if you do want to learn more about Lori or keep up to date on her exhibit, which will eventually happen at the Cambridge Public Library, um, you can visit her website, which is laurielander.com, um, which is right there. Um, I will give my little pitch. Um, so as you know, the Cambridge Art Association is a nonprofit. We have now been closed for more than two months, which is hard to believe. Um, 
And uh, we've really been enjoying having these virtual studio visits. We'll have another one next Tuesday, um, the day after Memorial Day with Kim Alemian, who's also a painter. Um, if you haven't signed up, I encourage you to do so. They're always at 1230, a nice little lunchtime bite of art engagement. Um, but if you enjoyed the program and you're able to, I encourage you to um, consider making a donation to our annual fund. The website is right there. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Again, um, any other questions? Anybody, anybody? Um, I don't think so, but I think you really covered all the bases, Lori. Um, and I know I've known you and your artwork for a long time and I learned a few things. So that was really exciting to be able to see uh, your process and your inspiration today. Um, so I'm actually gonna unmute everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Aaron. You. Thank you, Lori. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Thanks, Thank Lori. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. 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 You're amazing. Thank you, Lori, you for coming. Thank you. Lori. Just fabulous. Thank you. It's great to be there. Yes. Thank you again for Lori Lander. And we'll be back here on Tuesday. And thank you to Aaron. And, uh, thank you. Thank you, Aaron, so much for Aaron. creating these opportunities. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell everybody we couldn't do them if artists weren't willing to share their spaces. Um, so I Wonderful. appreciate it. Right. Yes. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye all. Bye bye. Bye, Judith. Bye, Judith. bye. Hi. Bye. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. It's been a while. I know. And I love this Zoom. For yeah, some I know. It's the greatest, isn't it? It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Are you on the Cape or in Newton? I'm in New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's I'm right. Little, I'm on my little lake in New Hampshire. Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. That was Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. I, sometimes I'd like to see the uh, the photo that you could not make into a painting. That was cur made me curious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a discussion. I'll find sometime. it. <laughs> um, I'm leaving. Uh, uh, bye. Why are you paying for when the bank didn't show up? Or why? Why? I mean, this is the fourth time ten thousand dollars. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> but Lori, so I am saving the chat for you. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Chat, uh, when this is over, and I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you for doing Bye. This. Thanks, Erin. Bye. -bye.